Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, he sent back this answer. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, or alone of all, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you, are, you have come to the royal position for such a time as this. The GPCC leadership, most of us, our children have grown. We have grandchildren. Some have even got great-grandchildren. They are not in school at the moment, but we will not say that we will be quiet because we love Mother Ghana. God is looking for a man to stand the gap. GPCC wants to stand in the gap. Elijah did not condone of the things that happened in the time of Ahab. Neither did John the Baptist compromise with Herod. It is the time we have to speak. We want to make it clear that GPCC is not a political organization. We are not towing on any party lines and we are not here to promote any party agenda. We are all above partisan politics. We are playing our role, our prophetic role, to the nation as prophets of God. We have seen what has happened over the years. And we cannot be quiet for this to happen. I'm just putting this in context. It was Christians that fought against slavery. It was Christians that fought against, fought for the civil rights movements in America and the rest of the world. And it is the time for GPCC to play our prophetic role. On that note, I want to say good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the press, and welcome to this press conference. Call at the instance of the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council to address and state our official position on the raging debate and controversy on the comprehensive sexuality education, which I have termed comprehensive satanic engagement because of the impact it can have on our children. Which the government through the Ministry of Education intends or intended to introduce into the basic schools curriculum come the next academic year. We also intend to use this opportunity to respond to some statements the Minister of Education made at a press conference he addressed a few issues back and also to bring some kind of closure to the first part of our strong resistance to CSE, which we have labeled comprehensive satanic engagement. Ladies and gentlemen, why are we speaking? Someone will say that the minister has spoken, so that is all. Communication is a process not an event. Rumors started. We came out. The minister has spoken. And we also need to respond and then go forward. Ladies and gentlemen, the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council, through its president, Reverend Professor Frimpo Amansu, earlier in this week stated the position of the council in opposition to the government's intended decision on this controversial policy. We have observed with great satisfaction the overwhelming rejection by many Ghanaians. This unfortunate and dangerous policy proposal that have the potential to threaten and erode our long-held traditional family value system that 
has served us well oh, and continue to do. George Orwell has said, if you want to destroy any nation or any people, deliberately deny them of their culture or destroy it. And when you, you destroy, deny them the understanding of their culture, then you have won in destroying the nation. Now, the war is no longer guns and cannons to conquer Africa and the world, but through the destruction of our children. That is the grand agenda globally. We have also followed with keen interest government's latest response through the Minister of Education, including the promise not to implement the controversial policy. In spite of its earlier denial of the existence of such policy, while commending government on its latest decision to suspend the implementation of CSC policy next academic year, we as a council is however not persuaded by a mere suspension as evidence a ban of existing government commitments to some international obligations on CSC, some of which have even been captured in the 2019 budget statement as presented to Parliament by the Minister of Finance. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, it is gratifying to know that we Ghanaians are not alone in opposition to this unpopular global move by some Western countries hiding behind some United Nations agencies and international NGOs to gradually introduce liberal education targeting children in vulnerable countries, including Ghana. Recently, churches and parents in Canada and other Western countries like England, specifically in Birmingham, have forced their governments to back down on the implementation of CSC. Ladies and gentlemen, let me give you a story. A young man was walking along a coast or a beach on one extreme winter day. He spotted a viper, a snake, frozen almost to death. It was like a piece of wood. The guy said, let me help this snake. He had compassion on the snake, took the, picked the snake, put the snake in his shirt so that his body heat will warm up the snake. Immediately the snake got warm and got power and life again. The first thing it did was to bite the person who has helped him and he died. CSC is a hydra-headed monster that could come in different forms. We are glad that the government has suspended it, but we must be on our watch to face it squarely, any shape or form that it will want to resurrect. The GPCC wishes to state, without any equivocation, its position on the CSC as follows. Position number one, GPCC position number one. We reject absolutely the inclusion of comprehensive sexuality education in any form and in any name in our school curriculum now and in the future as we see the policy as a long-term subtle agenda to target our young population with a liberal mindset to to accepting and tolerating LGBTQ as a normal societal behavior in the very near future. While acknowledging government's latest statement 
position number two, an assurance of non-implementation of the policy in the next academic year, we wish to reiterate that anything short of an assurance of complete redrawal, I repeat, complete redrawal of the policy and a promise never to introduce it in the very near future will not be accepted. We want a complete redrawal and assurance from this government and subsequent government that never will such a phrase or an idea or ideology will even be mentioned in the educational system or our society. Position number three, we shall not as churches, parents, and community shake our primary moral upbringing responsibility of our children by allowing government and other external interest groups to dilute our long tested traditional values on sexuality and allow the introduction of any CSE. Four, we shall not allow any external agency or in internal government entity to attempt to smuggle the CSE into the mainstream school curriculum or any other projects or programs, often with funding from these so-called external interest groups. To this end, we call on all Ghanaians, especially our mission schools, teacher unions, that is the Ghana National Association of Teachers, NAT, National Association of Graduate Teachers, NAGRA, the Concerned Teachers Association, and other like-minded stakeholders of our educational system to remain vigilant and expose any attempt to pass this obnoxious policy through the back door. Fifth, to further the above stance, we are working closely with other economical and interfaith groups through the National Coalition for Proper Human Sexual Rights and Family Values, which GPCC is a member, to build up a strong national resistance to this policy and to ensure its total redrawal. I repeat, total redrawal. The lawyers will say, expound, delete, and completely taken away, never to be reintroduced in another form or shape or name in the future. In the spirit of accountable, transparent, and participatory governance in a peaceful environment, Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council wishes to put forward the following recommendations towards an acceptable and permanent resolution to this controversy. Government should be transparent with the people of Ghana by publicly committing to completely withdrawing this policy instead of a mere assurance of suspension of implementation. This move, will, we believe, will engender trust between government and the key stakeholders of our education system. This is mutual trust, which is currently missing. This mutual trust is currently missing and may be pursued now. Two, Parliament, as a representative of the people, as a matter of urgency, should commence the relevant parliamentary process to review the aspects of the 2019 budget statement that committed state resources to funding this controversial CSE by ensuring that it is redrawn and that no funds are expected on this policy. Three, 
We call on government through the Ministry of Education to immediately convene a genuine and transparent stakeholders dialogue at all levels that will facilitate the drawing up of our own homegrown solution to the problems of sexuality within the context of our tried and tested religious and cultural moral values without undue interference from any external donor agency. Five, no, four. As a council, we are committed to supporting government in whatever way possible to realizing the ultimate objective of a homegrown and Ghanaian owned policy on sexuality devoid of all subtle external influences. Five, we strongly urge the government and the main political parties to resist the temptation of introducing the usual partisanship into this sensitive debate, as we are already picking signals in this unhealthy phenomenon in the current discourse. Before I conclude, let me say something. Most of the churches in schools in Ghana, especially the good schools, the top notch schools, were started by churches. They were governed by Christian morality and Christian leadership. Several years ago, they were taken over by government. And most of the challenges we are seeing is that the government hasn't got the strength or the willpower or the moral authority to handle this. For several years, we have pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed that they should give back the schools to the churches for us to train them. It is not happening. May I make the proposal that if government will not give us the school, then there should be partnership. They take the hardware and we take the software. They can build for us, they can pay the salaries, they can do the infrastructure, of course we will help. But the moral training and the upbringing of the children should be given to the churches to control and have authority so that we, we will bring out good, matured people in society. I've seen the breakdown of inspectorate division of Ministry of Education. When we were children, there were education officers, e D CEOs, and the rest, DEO, district education, they would come and make sure that things were done the right way. Supervision and monitoring have broken down. And as we are calling on the government to you know, do our work with CEO, as he, they can also think about these things. There are many things, but I will rest here and conclude. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen of the media, the GPCC is very resolute in its stance on the CSE and is standing firm with all other stakeholders on this matter with the hope that government will further assure us beyond suspension of the policy to taking concrete steps for genuine dialogue with all stakeholders to safeguard the future of our children from a pervert generation of vampires scheming to destroy us. We respect the words of the minister we are taking him by his word, but we want to engage in positive dialogue, as I have stated, to rest this matter. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, we also wish to take this opportunity to announce to you the Golden Jubilee anniversary of the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council, GPCC which will be clamorous with a thanksgiving service 
on Sunday, 28th October, 13th October, Sunday, 13th October, 2019, at Paris Dome, 3.30. We also cordially invite you to other activities in connection with this anniversary as follows. Anniversary lectures, Friday 11th October 2019 at the Church of Pentecost Connection Assembly, 5 p.m. Health Outreach, Saturday 12th or October 2019 at the Royal House Chapel. In closing, let me say something on the sideline. After much reflecting and thinking, in the book of Esther, Haman brought a plot to destroy the Jews. Esther intervened and the king averted it. The Jews celebrated a feast to thank God. So as we prepare for our anniversary this Sunday, I am personally encouraging all GPCC local churches across the country to celebrate and thank God for the redrawal and the suspension and the rejection of the CSC by the government of Ghana, by the minister through his press conference and by the good people of Ghana. It is not going to be demonstration against the government, but it's going to be celebration and thanksgiving to God for the fact that this hydra-headed monster that was kept going to destroy our children and children's children has been kicked out of Ghana forever. God richly bless you for responding to our invitation in spite of the very short notice given. Long live Ghana. Long live Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council.